naming ships. In the first century AD, the Roman Emperor Caligula, infamous for his hedonism, sadism, and brutality, asserted his dominance over both land and sea. Two of his ships, however, were mysteriously confined to a tiny volcanic lake known as Lake Nemi. While historians disagree on the actual purpose of the Nemi ships, they do agree that the colossal vessels were masterpieces of engineering, particularly the larger of the two. Measuring 240 feet long, the larger ship was akin to a floating palace. It boasted marble statues, mosaic fittings, advanced heating and plumbing systems, and luxurious amenities like baths. Its slightly smaller counterpart, just 10 feet shorter, was equally impressive, with marble palaces, gardens, and an intricate plumbing system for its baths. The ships featured stunning technological advancements, some of which would be lost until rediscovered in the Middle Ages. These included hand-cranked bilge pumps and piston pumps that supplied the ships with hot and cold running water via lead pipes. Before the discovery of the ships, it was thought that the Romans were incapable of building such large vessels. Given their enormity and the lake's modest size, just slightly over half a mile in surface area, it's theorized that they served as pleasure barges, catering to ancient Rome's wealthy elite and their appetites for wine, women, and debauchery. Their opulence is thought to have mirrored the extravagant lifestyles of Hellenistic rulers from Syracuse. Previously, Lake Nemi was deemed so sacred that Roman law forbade any vessel from sailing on it. An exception must have been carved out for Caligula's ships. The ships sailed for roughly a year until Caligula's abrupt downfall in 41 AD. He met his end in a tunnel beneath Rome's Capitoline Hill, assassinated in a conspiracy led by the Praetorian Guard officers and select Roman Senate members, all disillusioned by his erratic behavior, tyrannical rule, and extravagant spending. Caligula's floating palaces would meet a similar fate. The massive ships were filled with stones and sunk to the bottom of the lake to wipe Caligula and his depraved reputation from the pages of history. Although raised from the lake bed in 1929, as part of a major recovery effort initiated by Mussolini, both ships were largely destroyed during the Second World War, with only a few bronze fragments surviving. Some maintain that it was the retreating Germans in 1944 who intentionally and maliciously destroyed the Nemi ships, whereas it's more recently been suggested that the U.S. Army accidentally shelled the site. Skull of Pliny the Elder In 79 AD, a cataclysmic eruption from Mount Vesuvius blanketed the Roman towns of Pompeii and Herculaneum, preserving them in volcanic ash and sealing their place in history. With the skies alight, the Roman people living nearby tried to flee their homes, running for their lives. The mountain unleashed thermal energy, equivalent to over a hundred thousand times that of the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The eruption, though tragic, gave rise to a tantalizing mystery that's persisted for centuries, the death of Pliny the Elder, and the subsequent claims of discovering his skull. A renowned Roman author, naturalist, and military commander, Pliny's account of the eruption was relayed by his nephew, Pliny the Younger. Upon seeing the blast from across the bay, he embarked on a rescue mission by ship. While many fled, he ventured closer to the danger, purportedly to save friends and satisfy his boundless curiosity about the natural world. Tragically, he never returned. Pliny's death near the shores of Stabiae is believed to have been caused by toxic fumes, and his body was found days later, apparently unharmed. The mystery of his death deepened even as his legacy grew. Centuries later, in 1900, 73 skeletons were unearthed from ash along the shoreline of Stabiae. One skeleton, found in a sleeping position, clutched an ornate dagger and was adorned with bracelets featuring golden vipers and a golden necklace. These artifacts indicated a person of great stature and matched descriptions of how Pliny dressed. After associations with Pliny were dismissed, the landowner sold the gold jewelry and reburied the skeleton, only retaining the dagger and skull. These items were later donated to the Museo Storico Nazionale dell'Arte Sanitaria in Rome. In recent years, tests on the skull revealed that, while it matched what is known of Pliny's death, including his age of 55, the jawbone belonged to someone else possibly a soldier or a slave. This discovery aligns with stories where Pliny requested one of his slaves to hasten his death to avoid the excruciating heat. While some historians and scholars find it unlikely that the skull once housed Pliny's renowned brain, others believe there's a good chance. One historian commented, quote, It's very likely that the skull is Pliny, 
we have many coincidences in favor and no contrary data. Lapis Niger Even to the ancient Romans, history seemed rich and full of mysteries. One such mystery is the Lapis Niger, meaning black stone. This artifact, which was ancient even to the Romans who studied it more than 2,000 years ago, is part of a shrine located in the center of the Roman Forum. The Lapis Niger is thought to date back as far as the 9th century BC, and it's believed that Romans thought it held destructive, cursed powers and associated it with bad luck. Physically, the center of the shrine contains a piece of volcanic rock and part of a square stone pillar adorned with engravings in ancient Latin. It appears that a U-shaped altar may have enclosed this central section at one time, but the outermost ring, comprised of a number of black marble paving slabs, is the one that gives the Lapis Niger its name. Some have suggested that the sanctuary marks where Rome's founder, Romulus, now believed to have been a mythological ruler, was murdered. Some still say he is buried beneath. Other theories have been put forth, but because of the extreme age of the tomb, none can be confirmed. It remains as much a mystery to modern scholars as it did to their ancient Roman counterparts. Attempts have been made to translate the inscriptions themselves, which appear to convey a threatening law that warns against the violation or desecration of the sanctuary. It begins, quote, Whosoever will violate this grove, let him be cursed. It may be this threat which has kept the Lapis Niger so well preserved over the millennia for which it has stood. Emperor Sponsian in 1713, four mysterious gold coins were uncovered among a significant cache unearthed in Transylvania. While many of these coins bore the likenesses of 3rd century Roman emperors such as Gordian III and Philip the Arab, four unique coins showcased a profiled face and the name Sponsian. Initially thought to be genuine, further analysis in the 19th century led them to be dismissed as very poor quality modern forgeries, despite the fact that they were found amongst other ancient pieces and artifacts. The coins were believed to have been created with the mysterious fake emperor of Rome to fool collectors. Numerous other institutions and their researchers reached this same hypothesis, all supported by the fact that written history makes no mention of an emperor Sponsian. Much of the skepticism is based on studies of the coins that have found them to be cast rather than stamped, which would make them an anomaly for the time. Also, the inscriptions are unconventional, and one side of the coin bears a suspiciously close resemblance to a Republican Denarian coin from 135 BC. Unexpectedly, modern evidence from a 2022 study of the coins, involving meticulous examinations of the coin's wear marks under an electron microscope, concluded that the coins are in fact authentic, suggesting that Sponsius may have actually once lived, likely as a 3rd century usurper who sought power in Rome. The most plausible explanation for an emperor Sponsian having existed is that he was a local ruler who declared himself emperor in the Roman province of Dacia in the region of Transylvania sometime around 260 AD. This was a period of anarchy and unrest known as the Crisis of the Third Century, which saw the Roman Empire fragmented by a pandemic and civil war. With Dacia cut off from the rest of the empire, Sponsian may have assumed the title of emperor, and with it, the role of supreme military commander to maintain control of the military and preserve order in the province. Some have criticized the methodology of the 2022 study, so no consensus has yet been reached, but it may still be the case that there are entire chapters of ancient Roman history that are yet to be unearthed. Tomb of the Silver Hands The dawn of the Roman Empire saw numerous clashes, both political and violent, with various other cultures of the era. One such culture, displaced by the rapidly evolving Roman war machine, was that of the Etruscans, an Iron Age civilization believed to have existed since 900 BC. It was around 500 BC when Roman advancements began absorbing and eliminating the Etruscan culture. However, one unique and enigmatic discovery has left researchers stunned. Overlooked by the Romans and untouched for millennia, the belongings of a noble family were discovered in a tomb that was named for the fact that it contained a pair of mysterious silver hands. The necropolis, located in Lazio, Italy, has been the location of a number of excavations over the centuries, but only one has produced such a puzzling find. Housing the remains of nobles and commoners alike, it was here in 2012 that a team of archaeologists discovered a 30-foot corridor beneath the ground and dared to venture in. 
The corridor led to a sprawling tomb that had not been set foot in for potentially thousands of years. It contained numerous bronze items, including cups and components of chariots, as well as many pieces of high-quality ceramics. Beyond the many bronze items was a pair of silver hands. They were exceptionally well-preserved, to the extent that they still reflected light in the murky darkness of the tomb. Studies of the silver hands have allowed historians to gain some insight into their mysterious purpose, and it is now believed that they were once part of a spherilaton, a life-sized dummy intended to guard the soul of the deceased, made primarily from wood, but with some bronze or silver appendages. In this case, the wood had rotted away over the years, leaving only a pair of silver hands. The hands exhibit an incredible level of detail, considering their age, with hollowed open palms, great precision, and a sophisticated realism. The gold-tipped fingers suggest that the statue was likely created to watch over the remains of a noblewoman of great wealth and influence. It may be that the finer details of how a spherelaton protects a soul are lost to time, but one thing we can be reasonably certain of is that whoever was buried at the Tomb of the Silver Hands was likely one of the first and most significant casualties of the early Roman Empire. <laughs>